with proof of work implemented, let's now upgrade our blockchain project to be a cryptocurrency instead of just a block processor. We can do this by including the ability to pay out mining rewards and be able to process multiple transactions within a block. Our current implementation only allows a single transaction within a block, which kind of defeats the purpose of the block. In adding mining rewards, we're also adding the ability for the blockchain to mint new coins and introduce them to the users of the system, not unlike how bitcoins are minted. We'll give the miner of each block a coin reward that can then be sent to other users as our cryptocurrency blockchain comes alive. We can now upgrade everything so our little fantasy blockchain sports some of the features of the big boys. First, we can upgrade our block class so it can handle more than just a single transaction. We can do this by changing the data property from a string value to an array. This array will contain transaction objects, which we'll define shortly, so let's change the data parameter name to transactions. And then update the property name and assignment in the constructor as well. OK. We can also eliminate the index parameter and property as we no longer need this reference. Instead, the index of each transaction in the transactions array will suffice for our purposes. Let's delete the index parameter and property. Great. Now, in our block class, our new transactions array deals with transaction objects, so we need to define a transaction class that we can use. Let's go above the block class and define a transaction class with class transaction. We can keep this transaction class pretty clean as we're not really interested in much more than the basic transaction properties. Let's add a constructor that takes four parameters, a timestamp, a payer address, a payee address, and a transaction amount value. We can say constructor, timestamp, payer address, payee address, an amount. Good. Let's also add parallel properties and assign these parameters to each of them. Excellent. Now we can update our blockchain class so it can pay out a reward to a miner who mines a block, and we also need an array to hold unmined transactions, and then we need to add a new function that will execute mining logic on the unmined transactions that have been sent to the blockchain for processing. While we won't be implementing a block time in our project, we can assume that transactions will be sent to the blockchain between mining events. So a new array to hold these unmined transactions will work perfectly. Let's add a property to the blockchain class called unmined transactions. We can say this dot unmined transactions equals empty array. Then we need to add a property that will tell the mining function how many coins to reward the miner with. Let's add this dot mining reward equals 50. Cool, that's pretty generous. At this point, we can update the blockchain class's add block method with new mining logic. Let's completely replace this function with a new one called mine current block. So within this function's body, we need to first instantiate a new block. We can pass in a timestamp, the unmined transactions array, and the last block's hash as parameters. Let's say let block equal new block. And we'll pass in for the timestamp date.now and then this.unmined transactions and this.getLatestBlock.hash. Of course, in systems like Bitcoin, miners select the transactions that they want to mine. They'll typically choose the highest Bitcoin yielding ones first to maximize revenues. In our case, though, We'll simply have the miner take all unmined transactions regardless of their content and properties. With the new block created and the transactions assigned to it, we can go ahead and mine it. Let's add another line like this. Block dot mine block. And then we'll pass in this dot difficulty. This is the difficulty factor that we defined a few minutes ago. OK, now as mine block is a synchronous function, we can add a console.log beneath it to update the console with the mining status. Let's add console.log and pass in current block successfully mined. Finally, we can push this newly minted block onto the chain with this.chain.pushBlock. Great. 
Before we're done here, though, we need to do some housekeeping and some accounting. We have to reset the unmined transactions array to an empty array as all of the unmined transactions are now processed and in the blockchain. Let's add a line like this. This dot unmined transactions equals empty array. That's cool, but we still need to do the accounting, meaning we need to pay out our miner for successfully mining a new block. We can simply add a new transaction to the unmined transactions array and get both of these tasks done in one motion. So let's update the unmined transactions reset by adding a new transaction to pay the miner like this. New transaction, and we'll pass in date.now and mint miner address and this.mining reward. Cool. Notice we're saying the source of the coins are from the mint. This way we'll know this was a mining payment transaction that created new coins. Also notice that we're referencing the miner's wallet address in the third parameter of the new transaction. This is the miner address that our mine current block function will use to send these newly minted coins to the miner of the block. This function needs a parameter, the wallet address of the miner, so when the mining reward is paid, there's somewhere to send the coins. Let's add miner address as a property to the mine current block function. And now our miner will gladly receive payment. Okay, at this point, the blockchain class is looking pretty good. 